At the moment, it's sort of like the early stages. We did 35,000 vaccines in the first phase, another 14,000 now, another 12,000 coming in. But now there's going to be a big, a big surge of vaccines coming in. That's where we're going to see if we can, if our job is being done properly or not. Welcome to Eswatini, man. So WeasMonday.com came to a small kingdom in Africa to help a non-profit called Israel help the Eswatini government build a system for handling the whole COVID vaccine operation rollout. And the question that I had coming in was, how much can actually be achieved in a week? And the answer is an unbelievable amount. Short disclaimer. Unfortunately, due to the political situation, none of the government officials we worked with received permission to be interviewed on camera. Part one of two of this video. The challenge. More specifically, the logistical and operational challenges involved in vaccinating a country in Africa. Yes, but first let's find out a little bit about this place. There are 1.2 million people there. The entire place is basically one big tribe of Swatis and they consider themselves one big family. So there's almost no crime there. Stealing from someone's like stealing from your cousin. There's also a saying that there's no hurry in Switzerland. So we practically, people who take time to warm into some kind of an ID. And it has a king and the king has 15 wives. They also have the highest rate of HIV per capita in the world. So everywhere you go gives out free condoms. This is a little bit of a, a veneer a veneer of first world. On this corridor that we're, we're driving on now, which is just like a highway, this is, this is a golf course. You know, there's a five-star convention center. This is first world, but you go, you know, half a kilometer that way, left or right, and you're into developing. It. And then that is the majority of this country. And that there answers my question of, wasn't the hard bit inventing the vaccine? Isn't shoving it in people's arms the easy bit? And the answer is, vaccinating a country with a huge rural population is not straightforward. There's no one consolidated database where every single citizen actually has a, 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 a health file. And that is obviously on top of the cold chain requirement that is very, very specific to, to these vaccines. Not everyone has information about the vaccine, especially in rural communities where they don't necessarily have access to internet. Who is the population that is meant to receive these vaccines? How do we communicate that to the right people? Okay, so let's recap some of those issues. One, there's no complete national health database tracking citizens. Two, COVID vaccines arrive on a plane frozen and then need to be refrigerated and transported to rural locations that don't necessarily have electricity or fridges. Three, many people don't have access to internet or phones, so how do you let them know when it's their turn for vaccine, or even what the vaccine is? Four, you need to figure out which target population should get the vaccine in which order, where those people are located, and then figure out a distribution plan, which is hard to do when you don't have a national database. Five, then once you start administering the vaccines, you need a data collection system to feed data back from the field about how many vaccines were actually administered and to which population. And it turns out that those are just the logistical problems. I think the biggest problem is the acceptance of the vaccines um, and getting the communities really behind this whole vaccination effort. And one of the big efforts, of course, is the what they're calling the faith-based organizations. In other words, the religious groups, the churches, which is very strong. It's important to note that Eswatini is an extremely Christian country, thanks to conscientious missionary work spanning all the way back to the 1800s. And religion plays a major role in cultural decisions. In fact, we're going past now one of the most influential uh, of the the religious information systems, which is a radio station, and we need to get onto them to get it out there to the 750,000 Christians in this country who are listening to their priests. And we have to get them saying, guys, everyone, you need to go and get the vaccines. And I, as a priest, I'm gonna get a vaccine. You've got to do it too. Part two of two of this video. The solutions. Now showing the solutions to all of these challenges is beyond the scope of this video and my attention span. So we're going to focus on two of the solutions built. Solution number one that was built. This is about scheduling, packaging and delivering vaccines to over 300 vaccination sites. Before we arrived, this process happened on pen and paper and took someone about five to six hours every day to figure out. 
plus it was extremely error prone. So mission number one was to move this to the cloud. Here's how it works. The control room gets a plan of how many people need to be vaccinated in each vaccination site over a certain period of time. They then need to build a delivery plan and give that to a central warehouse where all the vials are kept. So those vials can then be packaged and delivered to 15 regional depots and then from those depots repackaged again and distributed to over 300 local vaccination sites. So with the board we built, when the logistics manager needs to order vaccines to a specific site, he just puts in the new order selects the site, and the board automatically populates the region it's part of. He puts in which vaccination team will be in charge of this, and the hours of operation for that clinic are automatically populated. Then all he needs to do is put how many people need to be vaccinated at that site, and it takes into account how many surplus vials are already at that site, removes it, automatically creating a package ID that links all those vaccination sites to the regional depot. Right, so this now takes the logistics manager 15 minutes in the morning instead of five hours, removing a whole lot of human error and gives visibility into where each package Package is. Off all of this data now, you can have dashboards that give insight into the workload of each vaccination team, for example, where they're expected to work and how many vials there are at each site for them. This scan shows each vaccination site and how many people they're planning on vaccinating over a given period. Building this was a huge win and a big step forward. Before moving on to the next solution, I thought it would be interesting to share another unexpected thing about this tiny kingdom, and it's this. Every car I got into spoke Japanese. Solution number two, measuring the efficiency of vaccines given per vial. To understand this use case, you need to understand that vaccines come in vials. And officially, there are 10 vaccines per vial. But if the nurse or doctor giving the vaccine is efficient, they can actually get 11 or even 12 vaccines out of the vial. I'm talking about a use case, which takes bin transfers, how many vaccines have been transferred between each site and depot, and takes number of vaccines administered, pulls them both in to a summary board, which shows you how many vials were used by each site on each day, how many vaccines were administered on that day, which enables us to compare vials used versus vaccines administered. Is this site performing as well as we would want it to perform based on how many vials they used? We have to follow up with this site and say, what's going on? We can now see every day how we're performing on each site. So now there's a dashboard that gives visibility into the efficiency of vial extraction per site. And if a site drops below a certain threshold, you can easily send someone out there to train all the nurses and doctors on how to extract more efficiently. These were just two of the 23 solutions we built to help the government. However, everything we built was just a prototype for when hundreds of thousands of vaccines actually hit the ground. And we have no idea when that will happen, or if all the systems we built will hold up under pressure. To complicate things even more, the day before we left, anti-government protests broke out in the streets. The government deployed the military to disperse the protests and the king managed to cut off the internet for an entire week. Things seem to have settled down and at the time of making this video, 181,000 people have been successfully vaccinated in Eswatini, which is huge. We were only in this tiny little country for a week, but it seems that despite the civil turmoil, Eswatini still has high hopes to become the first country in all of Africa to be fully vaccinated against the coronavirus. Oh,